Hi guys, it's Master Coach Tony Morgan and today's video is on the back to Geotech. Now I'm going to be presenting a series of videos on questions and answers using my new concept called a fault analysis quadrant. So as you know, a quadrant is split into four key areas. So that's what we're going to be covering on these videos. So what we're going to do you can listen to my student Tom ask me questions and I'll be answering his questions on the various things he's going to ask me. So we'll get inside the boiler and have a look and then you'll hear the questions being asked. Okay, so fire away with the questions. Okay, Tony, I, I, I'm understanding here that the, um, the Baxi Geotech would be operating under a similar um, scenario um, for fault finding as the previous um, ideal uh, independent boiler so we're looking at um, my question um, would be then the room thermostat and timer clock and um, that would be probably the first place you'd look if you never had nothing happening in the boiler at all yeah that's right so basically your timer is going to be the first thing in a sequence so that's got to be on which then sends power to the room thermostat the room thermostat then's got to be basically switch over if it's say like on a Honeywell, it'll come in on one, switch on three, return back to the boiler. This will be connections here, which will return back, sending power into the boiler. Yeah, you will then have on the front of the boiler, you'll have this demand. So you can see the heating radiator symbol. That will show there's a demand there. Now, if it's not shown, no demand that doesn't come on i think it's green then you're not gonna there's no demand it's not gonna work pump won't operate so that's the first thing you need to be looking at okay any more questions yeah tony the um the, the batter on this this um boiler seems to be slightly different i can see here this one's actually got a bypass does does that mean anything different for faults of the water valve at all or is it still this, the same basis of um, checking to see if the water is actually blocked or well basically um, first thing you need to establish that your pump's working if it is the burner's coming on basically on the front of this boiler you've also got an indicator that the burner's on so when that's on this pipe here is your flow pipe, the heat's going to be coming down here to your divert valve. Then you're going to trace the flow going out the divert valve to see if that's hot. If it's not hot, then as I said the burner's on, heat's getting coming down here. It must be then going towards the plate heat exchanger and going around the boiler just in a circular fashion. So does that then mean if it's going around the boiler you can actually touch the um, plate heat exchanger to see if it is getting excessively hot and that's you proving that it's not going down to the radiators for example? Well you don't even need to do that because if you've proven that it's not going down the flow by touching it it's got to be going somewhere so it's kind of common sense but if it's not common sense to people if it's not going down the flow and you know it's hot here not going down the floor to radiators it's got to be going across the plane okay. and then what will happen then the other thing what you'll notice if you look on the front of the boiler you'll see the temperature rapidly increase that will go up quite quick again that tells you that it's just going around the boiler it's not getting out of the boiler and that means the divert valve is not open for some reason so then you have to look a bit more closely why that is. So you're going to be looking at the actuator. You're going to take the actuator off, see if it's functioning, if it's moving in the right direction. Then you're going to be looking a bit more closely. You're going to be taking this off and then checking the voltages here. Like we said earlier, you're going to be checking across the middle one and the left, middle one and the right. See if you've got power there, if you have, then you're talking the actuator motor. 
if it's not actually moved in the right position and then if it's that actually it's working I mean yeah if that's working then you're looking at the probably the cartridge itself and stuck it well the pin itself could be just jammed so the actuator can't push against it and then you know it's so you would just then to, to prove that you would take the head off and, and just try and put it in hot water and heat them on to see if the pin moves in and out yep correct okay that's it so that's the type of thing you'd be doing then if you you know divert valve failed okay so another question is where's the um the primary sensor on this boiler well, that's inside this chamber here, inside the heat exchanger, main heat exchanger. So we'll look at that and, you know, you can look at more detail, but it's inside there. So that's the same um, the same function as the previous boiler, basically, if if, if um, your pump's started or whatever, um, but it's not igniting, then you look at something like the sensor to see if maybe they're faulty or... You would. However, um, you said about looking at the previous boiler now boilers are designed differently they behave differently now we're using this concept of the fault analysis quadrant now this is a framework which i've developed which we're going to be discussing through the questions and answers so we're talking about the central heating side of the quadrant now the question you ask there doesn't actually apply to the ideal logic and independent design because for on the independent design the ideal they use two sensors what work in tandem for heating and hot water on this particular boiler it only uses two sensors for central heating and only one sorry one for central heating and two for hot water so the ideal logic independent are using both sensors for both modes and this is using two sensors only for one mode and one sensor for one mode so just the understanding but through the questions and answers hopefully people will get a bit more insight to understanding the operation of the boiler Okay, so you got any more questions you'd like yeah, to ask? Yeah, another question here. Um, does this bother um, only have a main PCB or does it have two like the, the ideal? No, it's only got one PCB, um, which is in here. Yeah, so that does everything all integral. So if the PCB was causing like the bother to shut down in central heat mode, what would kind of, how would you diagnose that? Can you repeat the question again? Yeah, if if um if the boiler that wasn't um working in central heating mode, um, how how would you diagnose that the PCD was PCB was actually the um the problem? Right. Okay. Well, on these particular boilers, as I said, each one's got its kind of own characteristics. So in this one, when you've got that problem, which is a classic one for that, and it's an error code on the PCB called E. 168 and what will happen on that code is that it'll work okay on hot water but on central eating it will fail so the customer and then look at the code it look at the boiler here it'll be flashing and they might have to reset it to get it going but it'll just do the same thing again so they might kind of figure out the pattern oh it works okay for hot water but not for central heat. So they might say, I'm not getting no central heat, but the hot water's okay. So for you, you might come out to it and turn it on, and if it fires up, there's no problem. But about a minute later, or even 30 seconds, it'll run for heating and then just go, boom, off. Code will come on, and it only does it in central heating. And it's only unique to this type of boiler. So on this boiler, you've got basically three types of boilers which are in the same family so the Baxi Potterton and main and they all give the same type of problem because they are basically made by the same people so that's how you could tell for central eating if it's a PCB fault okay. I think the other one you could would be a PCB fault would be basically if 
you get your power coming in from the room thermostat as I said before you check your timer room that it's coming back in now you need to then check your primary sensor if that's okay no problem there and this demand line say that came on but yet it was dead nothing happened no power going to the pump then you'd be looking at a board fault again so they're kind of the areas for what we we're talking about okay regarding the pump then so basically if there's no power to the pump um it's your pump that's faulty well if there's no power to the pump then it's a board that's faulty it's a board that's faulty right if the pump has got power but nothing's happening um is it like an internal issue with the pump then yeah that's it yeah the pump has gone so basically you can check it here remove that cap or you can check it on the board i'd probably do it from here and then if it's obviously not turning one's power there the capacitor's gone inside the pump that's usually or it's stuck so there are these areas why the pump would have failed yeah um so what about the um is it the, the dials at the front of the border can they cause um shut down and just like central heating mode as well or yeah well basically the shafts can so that's your heating one here the shaft behind there could be broken and it could be in the wrong position so theoretically it could be broke and it's like broke off like that so it's off you would probably get it to come on for maybe a minute 30 seconds and it's going to get up to temperature real quick because it's on minimum and shut back off your selector switch could be broke that could cause it as well okay again the shaft broke right i think i just got one more question actually um so obviously um if the pressure gauge is showing one bar and you've done all the other checks could it well be that maybe the pressure sensor is not working and it's it's, it's showing a fault well what you would be getting there if that was the case this is the pressure switch here that would be open circuit it, you'd have a different error code coming up on the front of the boiler okay which is e119 and that will be flashing here saying low pressure okay and then obviously that's a different scenario altogether right okay i think that's pretty much all the questions we got on the center okay so that's going to bring us to the end of the video on the central heating and this is one part of the fault analysis quadrant so we'll move on to the next one in the next video using the fault analysis quadrant that's going to end this video hope you enjoyed it bye for now